Hello, I'm going to showcase a new build. This is a melee immune warrior focused build. Uh, it's based on the new Helm of Darkness. This is an item that's been in the game files for months. Uh, I've known about it since at least April. Uh, I've been waiting for the mercenary that drops it to show up and it's finally arrived. Um, and it's here. And this item uh, has warrior damage, melee resistance, and damage with daggers. So that sort of feeds into the rest of the build into some rather obvious choices like going with warrior damage and going with daggers. Um, so first off we're going to have two daggers. Uh, they're going to be warrior damage, damage with daggers, crit damage. Um, for my build I really like convert 50% warrior damage and melee damage applies to nearby enemies. I think those are really strong mods. They're really fun. Um, the conversion makes us a pretty strong hybrid with solid hunter and assassin options. And the AoE damage is particularly nice on the super fast, super agile daggers um, because we don't have to worry about um, getting an opening on a specific target. When we have a group, we can get an opening on any target in the group and suddenly we're hitting everybody in the group. It's great. Um, now, me personally, I like 100% damage but health capped at 25%. Uh, but I understand that even in a melee immune build, um, some are uncomfortable uh, with that 25% health cap. And that's fair. Um, so, just a quick change to make, if that's how you feel. Uh, drop the 100% damage, but health cap to 25%, and engrave the bow uh, with one of these two legendary mods. Uh, and then replace your left hand dagger with the Dagger of Cronus. Uh, the 40% damage when attacking from behind uh, is a really nice bonus to add to our damage. Uh, it's got the exact mods that we want, it's got damage with daggers, it's got warrior damage at the top, and it's got crit damage, those are our best three. Um, and the 40% damage when attacking from behind is a really nice multiplier that applies to all damage types. Uh, so it even improves our assassinations. And the extra base damage increase uh, is going to help make up for some of the damage that we're losing, even when we're attacking from behind, uh, by not having that 100% damage but health cap to 25 so it works out to be pretty close in terms of warrior damage, but slightly worse in terms of hunter and assassin damage, because we do miss out on the extra bonus damage, um, because this 100% damage applies to all damage. Um, so now that we're looking at the bow, we've got warrior damage, poison damage, crit chance. Um, in the video I did earlier, I showed definitively that 40% poison damage, always better than all damage. Um, so we definitely want to go with poison damage here, or fire damage, if that's what you prefer. Um, I've also got poison damage on the torso. Uh, this is the reason, this torso is the reason I'm going poison damage. Um, if I were rolling a fire build, um, there's no space for fire on the head, and there's no space for fire on the legs, uh, because, in again, in the video I did earlier, I showed that 40% fire or poison damage uh, not as good as 20% warrior damage when your damage with weapon, we have damage with daggers in this case, is over 100%, and ours is. Um, so that 20% is better than fire would be. Uh, and then the crit chance and crit damage mods are definitely better than fire would be. Um, so if we did go fire, um, this poison damage would turn into 10% all damage, uh, and this poison damage would turn into fire damage. So that 40 versus 40 here is a wash. Uh, here, the 10% all, uh, if you were to multiply it out with that 120% modifier, um, just to show it real quick, um, it's going to be 22. Um, so if we take 40 minus 22 to give us the difference, uh, we get 18, which is about half a stat slot, so not a lot, but there's more. Um, if we go into our abilities, Poison Mastery, uh, increases poison damage by 25%, uh, but fire mastery increases fire damage by 40%. Uh, so that's a 15% difference. So we'll go back to our calculator and we'll subtract out that 15% difference. Uh, and f so to arrive at a final difference of 3% poison damage or fire damage or, um, you know, converted warrior damage. Uh, that's not a lot. That's very, very little obviously. Uh, now, poison has the edge. It is a, it is very slightly better, um, but it is very slight. Very, very slight. So the on-hit damage is going to be 
really close with fire, just not quite as hard. So if you prefer fire because of the look, or because the damage over time effect is nice, and you like the damage over time effect, uh, you can totally go fire. Uh, you're not going to be missing out on much. Poison is just min-maxed, just that little tiny bit harder. Very, very tiny bit. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the rest of the gear. we got standard uh, melee resistance, uh, crit damage, crit chance here uh, in a melee resistance build. This is one of the slots that rolls melee resistance. Uh, and of the three crit stats that roll here, crit chance, crit damage while full health, uh, and crit regular crit damage, uh, regular crit damage is the least powerful, so that's the one we roll off for melee resistance. Uh, similar story here. We got warrior damage at the top, we got crit chance, we got crit damage while full health, and in a warrior build, because 20% warrior damage is better than 40% po poison damage when our weapon damage is over 100%, which it is, uh, we would want to roll 20% warrior damage here. Uh, but 20% warrior damage is um, not as good as crit damage while full health or crit chance. So that's what gets rolled off for our melee resistance. So into the abilities, uh, in a warrior build, I really like Ares Bull Shards. Um, everybody likes uh, Second Wind slash Ares la Last Breath. I could just as easily live without it, um, with this much resistances for melee. I don't find it all that difficult to regen health uh, without having this on my bar, um, but a lot of people like it, so I included it. Um, Ring of Chaos, great AoE skill. Uh, I have Weapons Master for the increase in warrior damage and the increase in crit chance, as well as the combo finishers deal more damage when combos contain both light and heavy attacks, which is really nice. Uh, I skip Shield Breaker. Uh, in my opinion, the warrior damage deals AoE damage, does that job for me uh, in a lot of cases. Um, often in a group, uh, there'll be guys with shields and guys without shields. You just target the guys without shields, and the AoE damage will kill the guys with shields for you. Um, if they if there aren't any guys around that you can do that with, um, you can just use the uh, lunging heavy attack to knock shields away just fine. Uh, or you can even use a dodge towards with a heavy attack. Uh, a lot of times that'll end up putting you behind the target, um, which lets you hit them whether they have a shield or not. Uh, so I don't feel like the shield is really necessary. I'd rather play around the shield than have a skill that deals just with shields. Uh, I don't particularly like the charged heavy attack for daggers, uh, so I skipped it in this build. I'm not a huge fan of Sparta Kick, um, so I skipped it in this build. Uh, obviously, we're skipping Fire because I went Poison, but if you'd want to go Fire, just swap out these six points right here for these six points right here. Real easy. Uh, I skip Gear Master because Armor doesn't do much in this build. Uh, our main weaknesses are Elemental Damage, which Armor doesn't reduce, and Range Damage, which uh, this would reduce Range Damage by 10% if we maxed it out and it would reduce it by an additional amount because of the armor if it was a physical-based ranged attack. Um, but, because of the way the game works, um, there is one-shot protection, and if you're at full health because you're immune to melee and you get hit by an arrow, um, you're not going to die on that one hit, um, no matter what, basically. Uh, so those damage reductions only help you if they take you from that guaranteed two-hit to a three-hit. And the damage reductions, given the rest of the stuff we have in the build, are not going to do that. So I skip it completely. Uh, Fury of the Blo Bloodline, uh, I think is essential for every build. Uh, it's just too strong an adrenaline regeneration tool to ignore. Uh, it's also really great if you can get an animation cancel on it, uh, because those six attacks um, end up multiplying that damage, um, which is really good for stuff like uh, the assassin damage on melee hit proc if you want to like one-shot a boss. Uh, overpower attacks are great. Uh, I love it with daggers. It's really strong single target damage. Uh, this is another case where um, you can sh shorten the animation by using it on uh, a boss or a non-humanoid or a knocked down humanoid uh, to get an extra big damage multiplier. Uh, but even without doing that, it deals a ton of damage. Uh, I like Ares Madness. Uh, you could also go Battle Cry of Ares. Um, Ares Madness is fun, and it's strong AoE. Um, it helps you wipe out a group of guys, uh, you know, in flashy fashion. Uh, Battle Cry of Ares is going to be better for your one-shot attempts, because it increases damage um, by 50%. It basically adds 50% all damage for the duration, uh, is what it does. 
Uh, I like to get two of three Archery Master in every build, no matter what kind of build it is. Um, if it's an archery focused build, I'll add another point uh, to get the extra hunter and headshot damage. Um, but for warrior and assassin builds, I really like this for the adrenaline segment is partially drained. It will refill outside of combat effect. I think that's really strong. Uh, a lot of times, especially with warrior, uh, you end fighting with uh, a partial adrenaline segment, and this will just turn that into full adrenaline segments, uh, which is really nice. Uh, I like to grab a predator and multi-shot in all of my hybrid builds. Uh, they're my favorite hunter skills uh, for, I think, obvious reasons. In particular, for a warrior build, uh, I like Predator Shot a lot more than Devastating Shot, uh, because Predator Shot um, is a long-range snipe ability. It has better one-shot damage than Devastating Shot, and if you are close enough where the zoom effect is a detriment, you're in a warrior build. Just hit them with your dagger. Um, so there's basically no reason to use Devastating Shot in this build. Uh, in a hunter build, though, I would have both for that added flexibility of having a long range and a short range single target ability. Um, I like having Sixth Sense 3 of 3. Uh, I like the snap. Um, I like the slow when somebody spots me so that I can try and do something about it. Um, I like, I just like it in general. Um, it's particularly good with um, Predator Shot or Devastating Shot um, if you're trying to take out a single target quickly and you need to deal a lot of damage from a short distance away. Um, but if you wanted to be slightly more warrior-y about it, you could stop at one point here um, and not really worry about getting the extra points, but it's only three points, no big deal. Uh, I really like slow time. I particularly like it in a dagger's build because the dagger's combo, super long. Like, this takes forever to get to that last hit. Um, it's possible to weave that into actual combat without using slow time, but it is so much easier to weave it in with slow time. Uh, and since you're hitting them so many times, you get all of the adrenaline you use on slow time back anyway. Um, so I, I think it's great. Uh, I have Venomous Attacks and Poison Mastery. Poison Mastery to increase my poison damage. Venomous Attacks to keep poison applied at all times. Um, I like this better than the legendary effect. Um, poison damage applied to... Dam weapon damage converted to poison damage. Uh, and I like it better because... I deal more damage this way. Uh, it frees up a slot on my gear so I can add a more fun legendary effect than one that just lets me be lazy and not tap three every 25 seconds, um, which is just not that hard. So I just tap three every 25 seconds. Um, Shadow Assassin core to basically every DPS build because of the crit damage. Um, the Assassin damage bonus is just kind of extra on the top. Uh, and then a single point in Revelation. Um, I really like having Revelation around. My personal preference is to get it to three of three just because I like that extended range. Um, but one of three, I think, is the bare minimum. So you could stop there. Um, and I have stopped at 160 points for ability points um, so that I can show what mastery points would look like uh, when you're in uh, a not, like super super large amount of points situation just to give you an idea of what you want to prioritize and some of these things are probably going to jump out at you as being different from what you think they might be and the first one is right here um, you can definitely max out crit chance while full health and crit chance um, nothing stopping you obviously but from a point for point perspective in what adds the most damage um, at this 160 point level, uh, we would actually stop crit chance at 10, and we would stop crit chance while full health at 14, um, because the next point is only adding a 0.2% additional chance to crit, um, and the next point here is only adding a 0.2% chance to crit. Um, now why 10 and 14? Uh, the reason for that is because there are breakpoints in your masteries where the next point is worth a little bit less than the point before. And those breakpoints happen at um, the first point. So the first point is going to be worth more than the second. Uh, the fifth point, uh, fifth point's worth more than the sixth. Uh, the tenth point and the fourteenth point, which is why these are ten and fourteen. And it's why most of my other masteries are going to be uh, one, five, ten, or fourteen. Um, or twenty. Sometimes it is worth actually maxing something out. So just as an example, damage with daggers, amazing. Definitely get damage with daggers. Um, but we're going to max that out almost first. Not quite first, but close to first. 
Uh, so we got 20 points damage with daggers, 14 points crit chance while full health, 14 points crit damage while full health. Uh, we got 10% or 10, 10 points damage while attacking from behind, uh, and 10 points warrior damage. Uh, we got melee resistance. This happens to be 10, but what we're actually shooting for here is the breakpoint of 100% melee resistance. Uh, this is the least number of points I could spend to get to 100%, uh, because I had th three stats on gear at 90%, uh, so this gets it just over 100. Uh, we got 14 points in armor penetration. Uh, I don't have space on my gear to engrave 30% armor penetration, um, so I think in, in that case, um, it's worth prioritizing armor penetration this early, uh, because we don't have any other sources. Uh, and I stopped at 8 points in damage dealt can restored as health, um, because 3% I feel like is the point where um, additional points just aren't really adding anything. Um, I think 1% and 2% are a little bit too small. 3% uh, I think is a good amount. Um, it's not really a breakpoint in the same sense that uh, melee resistance is a breakpoint, but at the same time it's not the same kind of, it's not the same kind of calculation as um, those stats that only add DPS, where obviously it makes sense to put the point where it adds the most DPS it possibly can. Um, so I've stopped at 160, and I'm just going to quickly go over what my next 20 points would be. Uh, my next 20 points, I would drop 5 points in crit damage, um, and then I would drop a single point, <laughs> 1 point, in damage while full health and poison damage. Uh, that first point is going to be stronger than the next point, so we're going to put one point in each of those and stop. Uh, that's seven points. Uh, the next five points, or I'm sorry, four points, uh, would be getting crit chance to 14. And then getting crit chance while full health to 20. Um, and you want to do it in that order. Now you can tell from the tooltip here that this is worth 0.2. Uh, and you can tell from the tooltip here that this next point is worth 0.2, and we always take the guaranteed critical chance uh, when they're equal over the crit chance while full health. Um, so we would want to do this one first to 14, and then this one. Uh, so that's 10, 15, 16, 17 points. Um, Uh, and then we would drop any remaining points we have, or the next three points after that, into armor penetration. So I guess that's the next 26 points, or, I'm sorry, 23 points. Um, so we would max out armor penetration next. Uh, and that's pretty much it for abilities, skills, and uh, mastery points. Uh, obviously, if you have a ton of mastery points, there's a ton more stuff you can get. Um, you would want to max out everything that I have any points in at all. Uh, up to this point, uh, and the things that you would want to consider getting after that point, um, I would get elemental buildup. Uh, I would pump that up until uh, your poison or fire buildup percent is 201%. At 201%, you hit a break point where basic enemies will get intoxicated or ignite after a single hit. Um, most other enemies are going to take two hits, and mercenaries who aren't resistant will take three hits. Um, so that's a really good breakpoint to be hitting, uh, because it does uh, can dramatically affect your damage to get that intoxication or that burning up one hit faster, especially with daggers, because they get those hits in quick. And the buildup is based on hits, number of hits, uh, not based on weapon speed or weapon damage or anything like that. Um, that is a breakpoint, though. It's not like a more is always better sort of thing. Once you get to the point where uh, you're hitting those breakpoints, uh, additional points don't do anything. It's still going to take the same number of hits. Um, so we, wanna, we would want to stop at just over 40% here if we had tons of extra points to spend. So just quickly pump that up to see where that would be. Now 40% is not enough. Um, that would ship that would put us just shy of the 201 percent we need so we need 13 points and we could basically keep it there indefinitely uh, a couple other things that you might want to consider getting if you have a lot a lot of points um, would be a poison weakening effect which can increase your damage mostly on bosses and maybe mercenaries if 
you don't have a skill up to one-shot them with. Um, damage when time is slowed down, just to add an extra additive multiplier in there. Um, health gained on adrenaline spent is pretty nice in a warrior build. Uh, chance to deal 25% of assassin damage on melee hit is really nice if you want to chase procs to one-shot bosses with. Um, I would stop at 14 if you're if you have a fair number of points, but not an infinite number of points, uh, just because that lasts those last six points are worth very little. Uh, cooldown reduction can be very helpful in a warrior-based build. Uh, damage with Fury of the Bloodline is pretty good. Um, damage restored on parry is also kind of nice. Uh, and the more of those health restored effects you have, the more you can kind of just drop second wind from the bar. Uh, damage on parry, another additive multiplier you could throw in if you have a ton of points. Damage with overpower abilities, another additive multiplier you could throw in if you had a ton of points. Uh, damage per enemy engaged, another additive multiplier you could throw in if you had a lot of points. Uh, and you could obviously pick up the damage with for the whatever skills you prefer. Uh, and that's about it for things you would want to pick up.